President, fellows and guests, my name this evening is to introduce you, if you don't already know it, to Castle Russia. From its origin as a principal seat of the Norse kings of Man and the Isles, around 1200, to the revestment of the legalities and customs of Man in the English crown in 1765. These two events perhaps are sufficient to emphasize how detached is the story of Man from England, or for that matter, Scotland, Wales, or Ireland, or cases across the See. But it's not isolated, it's more a cultural confluence than um, cultural uh, isolation. Council Russia has extraordinary survival of that, more authentic, top of the bottom yeah. in Russian. <laughs> um, but perversely, there's only occasional documentary references to it before the 15th century, the beginning of the standard lordship by which time the great medieval building you see on the slides um, was largely complete. So the early narrative depends on leading the fabric against the historical background with all the uncertainty um, of that entails. This was done in the context of the conservation plan for Max National Heritage, um, a pleasure to work for. Um, Edward Southworth and um, Steve Blackford are here this evening. The task was hugely helped um, by new survey plans and sections by James Brennan, um, who should be here if you're stuck on a train. Um, oh, sorry, he's here. Um, um, these, as you can see from the level of detail in this, have a lot more to do yet. We're almost only scratching the surface. What I'm going to say tonight is really the result of an iterative process involving many scholars who at least saved me as an interloper in the archaeology of man, um, from perhaps my words of gaps. So to all of you, many thanks. I'm not, of course, the first to study the castle. Um, building on the work of Henry Osborne, a wonderful, unreliable user of tales, to which we own the date 1011, into Arabic numerals um, over the doorway um, top right. Um, but he did observe the conversion to a prison in 1816. More reliable was Armitage Whitney, architect for the restoration in 1904 to 10, after the prison moved out, um, under the direction of the island's governor, Lord Raglan, who you see um, sitting among his works on the top left. Um, our fellow Brian O'Neill produced a perceptive paper in the Lodia back in 1951, much more research in the mid-1980s, of which, unfortunately, only the high leaves from excavation by David Freak so published. Man was under Scandinavian rule by the late 19th century, and variously subject to uh, the rulers of the surrounding kingdoms, the ultimate allegiance to the kings of Norway. The kingdom of Man and the Islands was one of the volatile Albano Norse and other political entities around the Western Sea Road, um, around the, 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 the Western Isles, and in the Hebrides, on to Shetland, and, and, and the, beyond. Um, and Godric Kroger, um, King Ori of Max Fogel, Conquered the island in 1079. And it's he who founded the dynasty which lasted until the death of King Magnus in 1265 at Castle Russia, the first documentary reference to the phase at all in the Chronicles of the Kings of Man. This is the political context of the origins of Castle Russia, as really the later of two principal words. The earlier one is a peel on the north side of the island. And the island um, divides very much along the north south spine, geographically and indeed um, politically and in its management. Peter Davy and the late Jim Roscoe established that Russia was the name um, of the treaty on which Russian Abbey was founded in 1134, 1138, then source um, you believe up here. My king, Olaf I of, um, of, of Man and the Isles, the young 
the son of John Truman. It was founded as a water access from Hess. Um, to East By the middle of the 12th century, it was an integral part of the identity of the royal house where its kids buried. Whether or not there was an earlier royal house in the area, we don't know. But Derby Haven, over here, was an important uh, landing place on the south side of the island. Russian was established um, on the opposite side of the mountain, Silver Burn here, on Castle Town Bay, Silver Burn being the river that links the castle and uh, Russian Abbey. Um, and the castle was founded on land directly overlooking the land of the Abbey, which was on this side of the river. All of this within the old parish, the new here. Now, the basement and part of the upper floor of the great tower, um, about 60 feet square, um, form the base of the essentially built central keep. And built of rubble, um, nothing of the internal plan um, retained um, in later work, but one can see it in light red on the elevation. And it's moving um, here up to the first floor offset. Maybe beyond that corner is a flat corner. Um, and internally, the rough walling retained in the later spot. Um, we can now add a single window in Brazier, um, but no other architecturally notable detail. It's here, and that's what it looks like. Um, on the wall, um, and we walked up that stair many times before we spotted it. Um, and the north front here faces towards the bird and the heart. Um, the entrance front really has to have been the north front, um, and probably by our whole building, the elephants, nice fireworks. Um, the great thing the excavation part and this, this here, is this ditch here, um, which whose line can be continued because of subsidence in the later masonry building here. It's close to the wall of the tower, um, but further offset on the north. And because it's so close, one assumes that much of the upcuts form the better. Possibly a compass. The entrance is on the land side, um, and what we have here is, is fairly clear, and I think fairly long established, was the basement um, of a great town, which had a century ceremonial spaces above, one or two stores. But of course, this doesn't exist in isolation. Um, it needs a bailey with other buildings um, to function as a royal or lordly residence. Um, and the bailey is suggested by boundaries in the 1869 town plan. Up here, characteristic tight ditch and then gradually slacker, slacker the hundreds um, beyond um, reflecting some major structure. Yeah. And so, what do we have here? I think arguably a southern gateway to the kingdom of man, in contrast to the ancient defended island shores of Peel on the north side, and looking to England rather than Scandinavia. Arguably a symbol of modernity, a clear statement of cultural affinity with England, the Anglo Norman world, other than the north. But who actually? initiated this. Wilraf the first, who founded Russian Abbey, reigned until 1153, is a contender. He spent part of his youth at Henry the first court in England. Um, so if Abbey and Castle are part of the same concept from the outset, um, that is um, something that um, countenance. But I think culture and resources suggest the son of Rainbow um, Anglicised federal, um, 
son, whose sister Africa married John the First, Lord and Conqueror of Ulster, helped him to resist King John, and with around 1204, Reginald did homage to John and recovered the great favour. The relevance of this apart from the family connections is that the Corsi began Eric Fergus Castle certainly before 1204. And um, the footprint actually of Carrick Fergus is slightly smaller than the Russia to Russia. But the sighting on the Red Sea is not unfamiliar. So I think the strongest circumstantial evidence for original found in Russia about the Turtle Country. Um, as a centre of kingship, justice, administration, um, perhaps status more than defence. Um, visible, very visible from the sea, uh, a bit like the, the castle on a very, very small scale, a metaphor, as it were, to the realm. Now, the last of the Grove of Dynasty, Agnes, gave appeal to the northern castle to the church in 1257, and there the diocese of Sodomensis, um, modern Sodor and Man, um, was established leaving Russia with the Soviet world seat. But we know nothing more beyond those bare facts. What then follows is archaeological evidence of the demise of the past. Um, we've got ragged corners of the upper story incorporated in the rebuild, um, and clearly packed back together a fair and get a sound surface in order to build up this next phase, that one was being against it. But this time formed with blocks of coarse limestone um, coming out of the local limestone deposits on the beach, in effect, in regular blocks. Um, and so it looks as though the castle was reduced to something not much more than, than the basement story of the offset here. Um, and um, this must be because of uh, events in the interim, as no sign of structural uh, settlement that would have caused it to collapse. Um, and the first thing that was done was to build the key back door. So we need a context for a castle falling into. Um, neglect, pillaging, demolition, and more all. And that's really provided by the death of Magnus in 1265. Um, he left only an illegitimate son and was claimed by Alexander in of Scotland. Um, Norway accepted that. And the Scots mount mounted in 1267 75 expeditions against the uh, Magnus rebels. Read with this. Edward I of England had possession by the late 13th century, and really then there was competing claims to the bank's throne um, and successive, with theoretical grants, lordship over its rivals in Scotland. In May 1313, um, Robert, Robert the Bruce, um, granted it to the Earl of Moray. Um, and then 1316, which commanded over the island. Um, and in, finally, um, after the uh, English defeat of the Scots, English defeat of the Scots at Caledon Hill in 1333, the, the matter was finally settled and the castle um, was in, in hands and the island. Um, the great event in all of this that is noted is always um, Robert the Bruce's siege in 1313, um, and it's assumed that he slighted the castle. There's no real clear evidence of this. Um, it's been repeated and gained and credence by repetition. But what is clear is that decay, damage, slighting of the key um, well, is well reflected in this uh, period of turmoil and uncertainty, also produced with many coin words. 
So after the period of response, it was the third recognized that the wanted human rights were directly granted to his grandfather to the kingdom of man. Montague was created out of Salisbury in 1333, succeeded by his son William IV, who sold man to the new group in 1332. So really only two owners, father and son, were less the same. And really they are responsible for the final rebuilding of the medieval castle. It's complicated, it's undocumented, but certainly architectural belongs to that period. It begins with the first steps towards reconstruction. Um, I would it make it rapidly defensible, um, brought to a temporary halt. So more temporary halts as we go on. Um, the purple um, word slide. Um, and to the bases of two towers added um, on the south and west as part of that. Um, now these flanking towers um, with a solid base to the um, lowest story were always intended to go higher because certainly the western one has two barbary charts for two walls. Um, and the characteristic of this work is we segmental vaults um, with chamfered roofs, very much um, in vogue in the north from about 1350. Um, and these are also distinctive to the phase we have these um, window embrasures with seats, um, shoulder windows to doors. Are the same as in the next phase, so there's no great lapse of time. This one. The internal plans. The internal plan is intended to have a tight courtyard. We have um, the scar of the wall here, um, and there it is. Um, and there it cuts back um, in a phase that is color because we can't actually read it stratigraphically to the, uh, to the uh, um, addition of these elements. It does seem to be a more piece. And it gives rise in the later building to this sort of misalignment in um, the corner. Um, misalignment at this point, which is clearly reflecting um, an earlier wall answering this one. Um, and there is the stump of a curtain or mantle of wall coming out of the western uh, tower added here entirely into the with it. And putting that into context, um, we have a surviving fragment here, an excavated foundation here, and fairly clearly it's going to have an entrance here, the wall that's later rebuilt because of that narrow, that, uh, narrow facet. Um, so we have this initial work which is related to the entrance, like the earlier phase, on the land side. Now the influence of Trim Council in Ireland, um, here basically, um, on Castle Russians, we discussed a great deal. Um, and in fact, there is an influence, I think, because turning this one on its edge deliberately, I can see the relationship between the whole building entered from the side. The towers, although this much yet added to Russia. Um, and this curious little banded wall, um, which is answered here. But this is true in its mid 13th century form. It seems to be at the back of the mind of whoever was doing this um, half a century perhaps 
and meet him. But there's a very different course to your past plan. Substantive rebuilding then um, follows um, major modifications of the internal plan, a bigger courtyard, um, and the realignment cast then comes to the east. This is the big change that happens when they abandon that earlier plan. Um, carried forward in stages, modified as it goes, probably begun in the mid 14th century when the Scots and French were increasingly effective. Um, castles said to have been held against the French um, in 1377, but recent scholarship, I think, suggests that was a bit of propaganda. Um, they began by raising the keep and upper story that we tower on the plan, um, adding the East Tower, um, and all these little seals its work. But the internal plan was not foreseeable from the internal work. It involves this radical departure, and yet being space, and all the internal structures um, surviving the rocks of this period. Um, it was halted as a temporary lady moved here. There's the spout, there's the drain, there's the um, precinct of the lead works, some lead still in it, there's the top period. And then very rapidly on this, despite the lady moves, the completion of the majority of the key the space here on the third floor, um, but higher than originally intended because all of these rooms are reached um, by stairs. Um, down from the wall walk and the main spiral stop of the wall walk and then it's there. <coughs> I'll come back to how the plan works um, later. Um, most of the openings are plain slits, but um, where not, we have Oakley headed chapel window, internal windows, typical details, um, segmental arch fireplaces, an arm and arch of shoulder lintel walls internally, and the arches externally. You can see in this photo how distinctive in the right light and weather conditions the different phases um, of the masonry the key are. Now it's a substantive completion of the key, attention shifting to a new curtain forming the outer wall. Um, and this was anticipated, I think, in that raising of the key and wall heads beyond the original intention. Three phases. Um, this one was going to be finished with a return um, in the butt joint. This one more ragged, um, but clearly enough. Difference. Um, but the form detail develops as one goes. Um, one can see um, no projecting buttresses here, and firing platforms on buttresses here, or its out here. But the curtain is formidable in scale, and it's complete for all work. Um, around the whole This first stage has all the firing platforms here. Um, the second phase has larger firing platforms um, on the solid piers. And with very unusual, arguably perhaps experimental gun ports um, above, above, above the um, the the third um, has um, standard gun ports um, of the inverted keyhole um, shape uh, in towers which have four sides now, the back front. Again, I'm grateful to Malcolm Hislop drawing my attention to um, this being an adaptation of a county garden motif 
plus four level access to this stair, um, these two rooms, these three rooms, but again, sharing this common service area um, with the teaching rooms here. The, the gatehouse then contains the lesser rooms and the ground room at the top of the gatehouse. There. So we have basically two apartments, um, of which this is clearly the lords or kings of man's apartments is the best one to do. And just looking at this rest in the 1980s, um, there's the hall, the fireplace behind the uh, rest high table. Um, there's the room, the principal room beyond, with its fireplace, through the passage, into the treasury or unit room, with this enormous built-in um, cupboard in as a private. At Castletown did this have the institutions um, of a banner. The island was essentially a few of each day. Nucleated settlements from eight development. But a township outside the walls is documented by the 1420s. These property boundaries up here from excavation are late medieval to early 16th century. Um, so the southeast, this area is the obvious location after realigning the house entrance here. The plan of this area was deliberate. Um, and beyond the problem of the field and fire here, um, with the market in its present location, which here more or less, and some various chapel on the place plan. And St. Mary's is odd because it's got a round arch in the field. Originally of two um, orders, the inner chamber, the outer square carried on a form um, that the plaster was hacked off to three decades ago into the present mess. Um, and the sandstone is exactly like that used in the castle. Here's the little building, here's the Arches of the Nile. That is it. Ignore the dating on the plan. Um, there's a similar work to the Russian Abbey. In the north transept here, uh, remains of arches um, into the chapels east and into the body of the church south. Here we are again, called about under order and in a order lost here with Shannon. That's comparison. So but when we come back then to um, the castle, of course we find round chamfered arches again in the 14th century. There's much speculation about the date of the chapel in the Russian Abbey, but my feeling is that they're all really 1379 each. Um, one of those spread occurrences of the use of the form. And this really suggests that we want to be cute um, as the investor, as it were, with this. So the castle in this frame is really um, expresses the actuality of strength. This is the Victorian castle, um, but deploying up to date technology. It's a fairly brutal um, message of lordship um, on what was really, I suppose, like the Channel Islands, a form of base defences against France and the Allies. Um, but it's also, of course, expressing the status of both our Europe. 15th century, really, when the um, Stanleys take over the, the place, um, the, the, Team, sorry, four. Um, the after Stroop's downfall, very little needs to be done to the castle, very little is done to the next century. Bar, the building here, the new Bailey, and the of the world is visible there, and all the into these more structures. So Moving on to the 16th century, all these changes. The castle is updated with the latest military fashion. 
um, the better to withstand artillery attack. Um, glasses here, um, round tower here, survive. The towers on the glasses fall. Um, uh, bubbling back into the base of the keep and upgrading the domestic accommodation. Um, I rather agree with O'Neill um, that, that the most likely date of this is around 1540. It um, reflects the English device fortifications of the same period. Um, there's the gateway, a bit torn castle um, in front of the Cleveland community ditch. There is the glasses in relation to the medieval curtain wall. Clearly, the level in this firing point is that more or less the present moves first as the firing point. There's the glasses as it appears now, of course, we can the stone. Um, and we get um, the best view of this probably from the um, Daniel King engraved the drawings of the 1650s. After the Civil War, but still showing here the glasses and the first tower, the castle, very much as it's been survived. There, moving around to the west side and the larger tower at that end. And there, looking down the marketplace, here, Remember, we're, we're a century on, but the difference in level between here and the outer bailey <coughs> um, is reflecting the line of the bailey defences by this time. And the round tower, um, essentially two floors, one platform, and presumably related to the fences of earth and the bailey and across the end of the moat. Stair in the hall leads to a block wall out here um, to the defences of the bailey, so it's still very much functioning at this time. The domestic uh, arrangements suffer a major change here. The keep gets modernised by taking the floor out of this space, the original services and dropping the, the hole down to that level in the building the fireplace into the wall and connecting the floor above. A long gallery in here, and then on the top floor, a railed um, gallery balcony connecting the stair here to this end and the main floor up. This was obviously not very satisfactory, so um, a new Lord's House was built, and last we have a date, 1582 to 3, from the building of this, incorporating some medieval work. Much altered, that's the only original window, it's facing the doorway. And extension to the gatehouse here, into the chapel. And the introduction of the clock, I think they get the mention of clocks, so everyone does. Um, not tradition has it, it came during a, a short period when the, the initial man reverted to the English crown to the English time. Um, and the recent album um, was made, I think, suggested that um, it is indeed in its essence of that date. Um, finally, the Civil War. Final military action. Um, James Stanley, largely resident um, from 1627 as governor, inherited the title in 1632. He'd already left in 1639 to serve the king after dismissing Madame de Wavy's history as an attendant of the capital of the island. Um, he returned in 1643 when Christian in matters of the mainland decided to revolt. Um, he fortified and held man for the king, while the countess defended um, their property in Lancashire, the house. 
Um, and Stanley returned to England and went through its phase of the siege. Then back to the island, where he and the counters established a kind of court in exile, um, with masts, we are told, um, for the diversions. Here we really do have a toy castle that's on the kingdom. Um, but to do so, he added an extra four and a half to the monthly house, um, all in very basic construction, the remains of the floor of the bathroom door and partitions here, there, um, and a very basic pit out. The western bailey was long abandoned and all off the really rather thin wall. Um, the entrance um, reinforced and a battery built in outside. The main threat was from the sea The Dane, Daniel King, was used a very helpful of this. Um, this one shows the raised up lodgings best. Um, perhaps they would better remain behind the protection of the curtain as the 16th century ones were. Um, the gateway to the Barbican is strengthened, um, and this peculiar chemise built on the outside, um, perhaps not quite finished. Um, the keep is an artillery platform um, up here. Not. <clears throat> but all did not end well to the side. Stanley left in mid 1651 um, to prevent a royalist insurrection in the north, defeated at Wigan, captured at Worcester, excavated and executed for treason. The Countess surrendered Russian to Parliament in February 1652 perhaps the last word was the surrender. Meanwhile, Christian had facilitated the parliamentary force landing into our opposition. Um, however, after the restoration, the eighth Earl uh, had been tried for treason um, in January 1663 on the grounds that he had to be did not apply to the kingdom of man. Christian was pardoned by the Kingdom Council, but too late, as the Earl had already found him guilty of executing the Lord. Illyam Doe um, has forever since been a symbol of nationalism. The Civil War was the last military action. Um, what followed next was the 1690s, the Lord's volumes improved, and here, in the age of inventory, we can actually identify um, the rooms um, more or less still um, in the historic form of our agents. Um, and this is the attempt to do so, I won't go into detail. But surviving in the building is quite a lot of collection molding and paneling. Um, and up on the top floor, where we have um, the Lord's Chamber, the Lord's Dressing Room, the Lady's Chamber, in the Sanctum, as it were. Um, some very high quality work lost in the 1970s with presidential conversion, but certainly become real. And it's from this period, really, we have the earliest plan of the building, signed by one Fane, um, but recently realized that um, the elevation was worked up from this naive sketch, which is in the bank's um, archives. Um, initials IA. Um, presumably for James Athol, um, and the year he inherited Madness, the Stanley Air, six. And this must be the original um, of this. this uh, but by now, um, there's still the seats of Island Law and Government, management of the estates. Um, the fame plan shows plumbers, carpenters, smith shops, and the outer ward, and all these. And here, um, and um, whether it's the people on the street, poultry. Um, after the investment of 1765, it was of damage to English customs and revenues by the smuggling trade, the castle became a factor of property. But that's a story, as it were, another day. Um, I 
end of the brief period of 1775, largely because of its civil society's own connections. By this time, the castle was a very popular subject um, for artists. But down to the early 18th century, it's not unreasonable to describe Castle Russia as a fortress palace. Um, initially, it was a small kingdom in the early 14th century, in effect, of an English principality. The lords still referred to themselves as kings, at least until Henry VIII's time, um, when, it, when it seemed um, perhaps unwise to continue. <laughs> um, and the, the balance, of course, between the rooms of fortress and palace um, have shifted over time, but they've both um, always been present. What survives now is as near complete an illustration of a medium-sized fortress palace as one can find 